Generally speaking, when one talks about sustainable development, we don't, one doesn't talk about environmental ethics. Sustainable development is not approached in a philosophical manner. And I want to bring those two nations, notions together. Environmental ethics, for instance, what is it? Well, according to uh, Aldo Leopold, environmental ethics are the kind of ethics supposed to define the relationship between man and earth, as well as the animal and plants, animals and plants which inhabit the planet. What are the questions being raised? How are we supposed to behave in nature? Do we have full authority over nature? Do we have duties versus nature? And does nature have rights? Therefore, if the objective of environmental ethics is to question the moral base of the relationship between man and nature, it also analyzes the impacts on the society in terms of rights and obligations. And the concept of sustainable development, according to Brundtland's report, is a development that meets the needs of present generations without compromising the capacity of future generations to meet their own needs. But what are the implications of this definition? well-being of present generations should not be detached from the need to preserve the future generation's well-being. Therefore, we are basing our approach on the importance of needs, and we need to think about equity between generations and within generations regarding access to resources, but also pollution. The second element is the dependence on, of development versus nature. There is a long-term approach here, and it takes into consideration the dynamics of environmental systems, ecosystem and biosphere. Both elements refer to a very specific economic issue, which is essential if we talk about sustainable development. We must deal with the division in time of environmental resources and the environmental impact resulting from the way we use nature to meet essential needs for future generations. Therefore, ethical in considerations uh, when being introduced in this uh, train of thought will deal with the uh, rights and obligations uh, versus future generations so that they can have the same resources and we must limit the degradation of said resources. Environmental ethics also enriches the stakes associated with sustainable development. This new dynamic approach leads us to raise a question. What about what we need to give to future generations? What is it that present generations must leave for future generations? We bring together two perspectives, the economic perspective and the ethical perspective. Let us look first at the economic perspective. For instance, here there are two different approaches to sustainable development. First of all, the uh, weak sustainability or durability insists on the capacity, the replaceability of different resources, natural, technical, and human, in order to maintain in the longer run the stock of uh, natural assets. And this is the condition for weak durability. Only natural resources which have a price are taken in consideration, market resources, really. The second assumption, the second approach is the strong durability approach, whereby categories of capital and uh, technical progress are limited. The durability rule is uh, more difficult because it means that we have to preserve in time environmental resources and assets, whether they be market goods or non-market goods. They are based on natural resources and environmental services rendered by the biosphere and the ecosystems through different ecological uh, functions. Now, regarding the ethical vision, the approach, the weak durability approach, only takes into consideration a minimalistic content of nature, only considering those uh, goods that are market goods and have a market value, and does not consider the way they are being used by current generations. Development sustainability can also be guaranteed by the creation of a compensation fund coming from the income of uh, the use of uh, those resources which are being exhausted and future generations can use the 
fund due to the loss of resources uh, overused by our current generations. Transfer between the generations is based on the choices made for current generations in the name of future generations. Therefore, the preferences of current generations determines the possibilities of their offspring, and this is legitimated by uh, rights between uh, successive generations. This is an anthropocentric environmental type of ethics. Now, strong durability is characterized by complementarity between the various types of environmental resources. Pre Long-term preservation of the resources implies that we uh, set a number of rules in the way we use nature. For instance, the um, speed at which we use nature resources should be slower than the renewal rate, or we should preserve totally some critical elements for which no substitution exists and the degradation of which would be irreversible. In this case, environmental ethics are considered as a very specific form of expression of equity between generations simply applied to environmental elements. Obligations for current generation towards future generations will allow to express the existence of a general interest in equity between generations so that in the long run nature is preserved. Therefore, the preferences and the choices of current generations will not determine which obligations will be maintained between generations. This is a biocentric type of environmental ethics, and the values of natural elements uh, implies that we regulate human action by setting rights and standards uh, to uh, limit the use or even preserve totally some uh, natural assets. Environmental ethics will define standards of action in agreement with the principles of sustainable development, the preservation of biodiversity, or the concern for the well-being of our future generations in the context of the, the current world, economic world. And because we have climatic changes to deal with, it is very urgent that we start implementing those policies.